Not many things can be said to last you a lifetime these days. Your phone starts to get slow and lose battery after a couple of years, and those fancy shoes you've bought start to come apart, and even your shiny new Tesla has got a long list of issues too. Um, this door will not open. Uh However, in the UK stock market and in the FTSE 100 here in the UK, there's been companies that have so far stood the test of time and remained at the top of their game. Whether that means always being in the top 100 list itself or continuing to pay dividends and increasing payouts even during times of crisis. There is an exclusive group of companies that could live very happily in your portfolio for quite literally your whole life. Now, I know there's been loads of videos like this on YouTube, but they almost always cover the popular US stocks. So I thought I'd do something slightly different and talk about only companies who are headquartered in the UK and listed on the London Stock Exchange. So here goes, these are my top picks for stocks to own for life. Quick summary here of some of the key factors I've used to help deciding these. The age of the company, has it actually been around for a long time? The total revenue, is this company actually big enough to weather the crisis? Is? Dividend payout, if so, have they increased their dividend pay each year? Have they been pretty consistent? Future market potential, can the company still grow, even if it is slowly and surely? And finally, do they have a good economic moat? Can they raise prices without any loss of sales? And is it difficult for competitors to enter their space? All of these are important factors to consider. And as you will see, this group of companies I've put together will have unique things about them, which have allowed them to survive and thrive. So let's get straight into this from the top and in no particular order, let's start with this global giant. Enter from stage left, or your left or my right, Diageo. Diageo, if you haven't already heard of them, is the second largest producer of alcoholic drinks in the world. They operate in more than 180 countries and they own more than 200 different brands of drinks. Everything from Guinness, Smirnoff to Scotch whiskey. So they've got pretty much everyone covered. And they are in fact the largest producer of Scotch whiskey with brands such as Johnny Walker under the belt. The company has a really interesting and long history and was formed from a merger of two companies back in 1997, but you can trace the history of some of the brands much further into many hundreds of years. Let's take a look in more depth at some of the financials and performance of this company to see why I've picked this stock as something you might want to own for life. Firstly, performance. Over the last 10 years, the company has delivered around 180% of capital growth in share price, and this does not include the dividend payment, which has also increased over 20 years consecutively making this one of the greatest dividend paying stocks on the FTSE 100. Dividend yield stands around the 2% mark, which is not gonna blow anyone's socks off like their spirits will do, but it's well covered and this company is a cash printing machine. Let's have a look at some of those financials. In total, last financial year, the company brought in over 19 billion pounds, made a gross profit of 60%, made net profits of 2.8 billion pounds, which is a healthy margin of 21%, a huge amount, which would make a lot of companies very jealous indeed. Free cash flow also was significant and over three billion pounds for the year. And they're also buying back shares to deliver even more value to shareholders. They weathered the storms of 2020 very well indeed and look to be set to bounce back even better than before. It's a tough space to break into. So trying to compete with Diageo here is probably gonna end up with you either getting bought out or spending a lot of money on your marketing. I currently hold Diageo in my dividend portfolio and I'll certainly look to add my position over the coming months and years. Onto the second pick, another multinational selling global giant, Unilever. There is almost no way that you can live your life without having used or seen a Unilever product and they hold more than 400 different brands. Many of these companies have been acquired along the way in their long history and you might not even know that some have a single owner of Unilever. Their major brands include everything from Hellman's mayonnaise to Ben and Jerry's ice cream, all the way to Lynx deodorant and Purcell they've pretty much got every bit of your house covered. You pretty much can't escape. The company was also formed by a merger similar to Diageo when a margarine producer and a soap manufacturer couldn't keep their hands off each other. Rather than being a slippy relationship, it turned out to be a match made in heaven to the global giant that it is today. And it's also nearly 100 years old. So unlike some US hype stocks, it has actually survived major economic downturns in the economy. Performance over the last 10 years has been good with over 67% gain in capital, not including those dividend payments. And once you factor those in, you get a healthy current yield of around 3.5 to 4%, which just like our last pick has been paid consistently and grown over more than 20 years. This type of stock would sit really well in a dividend portfolio or even as a defensive play to support your more speculative plays and give you some inflation beating returns while you try and find the next Tesla. And when you do find the Tesla, let me know. But don't say Rivian. Please don't say Rivian. 
Looking slightly closer at some of their high level financials, we'll see that this is another cash generating monster. Keeps on producing regardless of the economic outlook in the wider markets. Latest free cash flow is over 2.4 billion euros with an operating margin of 18.8% making it one of the most profitable in its class and sector. Consumer Staples and Discretionary is a great marketplace, which, as we've just mentioned, remains essential regardless of the economy. I'm pretty sure that people still eat ice cream when they're both happy and sad, right? Anyone trying to enter this space is faced with a lot of barriers and will have to spend a lot on making their brands attractive compared to some of Unilever's household names, or maybe even get themselves acquired along the way. So I don't think this company is going anywhere at all anytime soon. Here's to the next 100 years. Although ideally, if they could grow the share price over the next 20 to 30, that would be much appreciated. The next company is one that's easily flown under the radar, quietly delivering massive shareholder returns over the last few years in a pretty boring sector that it pretty much owns to itself. The company I'm referring to is called Halma. It's been around for over 120 years and basically started as a rubber business, producing that useful commodity until it eventually acquired and pivoted into the mechanical engineering and electrical sectors, going public in 1981. The company leads the way in smoke and fire detectors, as well as producing alarms and other safety equipment. No sexy electric cars here guys, but very sorry about that. But you can look at the performance and you'll be asking yourself why you hadn't paid attention before. Over the last 10 years, the returns have been pretty crazy, at over 800% if you put your money in back then. And then there's also the dividend to be paid too. Whew, get a double whammy. Speaking about dividends, this company is another reliable payer. And although the yield has been going down slightly, Due to the rise in the share price, the dividend payments have been rising year after year for more than 20 years. Although sadly, at 0.6%, you won't be getting much in terms of income from this stock right now. Looking at some of the latest financials, here are some of the high level figures worth considering certainly. £1.32 billion in revenue for the year with a healthy operating profit of £241 million. In its latest earnings call, without committing to firm numbers, Alma mentioned it's expecting to deliver a low double digit organic profit growth. The only thing worth noting here is that the company has grown so quickly and produced such high returns that its current share price will be strained to grow a lot further and faster. The company is currently trading at over 40 PE ratio, which sounds low to maybe some of you, but it's very high for the FTSE 100 and certainly high for a sector that's not going to be growing much too fast and low double digits at best. So in terms of pricing and whether you should buy now, just make sure you look into the financials and make a decision that's right for you. But this company is a reminder to us all that we don't have to look at the attractive and exciting technology companies to get growth. And actually there are plenty of hidden gems out there waiting to be discovered in unloved and boring sectors of the market that just keep on generating cash and profit year after year. In the penultimate spot for no reason whatsoever, we need to look at the pharmaceutical giant and the largest constituent of the FTSE 100 AstraZeneca, and one of the largest companies in the world in its space as well. It trumps Unilever by a good £20 billion in market cap. In terms of performance over the last 10 years, the company has delivered 181% return on capital alone. And that does not include the healthy dividend yield, which has been falling as the share price has increased. If you actually zoom out further on the stock chart, you'll see an all-time return of over 1200%. This company's not been around for the longest time in its current name and was formed from a merger back in 1999, a joining up of the British firm Zeneca and a Swedish firm Astra. The giant has acquired numerous companies along the way and has an impressive revenue number of over $25 billion from the last financial year. Most notable recent performances, including taking part of the pandemic response with a vaccine produced with high efficacy that has been approved and used all around the world. For financials, this company has a gross margin of 72.38% and a net margin of 4.48%, a respectable number considering the field in which it operates, where a huge sum of money goes into the research and development of new drugs and medicines. In this industry, the needs and requirements of the healthcare market will only seek to increase as people desire the cures and fixes for all of their ailments and eventually the cure to live forever. But that might be beyond our lifetime, but until then, this company looks to be a good shape. Another defensive play that is extremely well moted with no easy points of access that will be almost certainly be around in one way or another for many decades to come. Fingers crossed. And finally, I had down two options here and then further a couple of options from another two, but I settled on the supermarket giant Tesco. I also had BP too, but just as I thought that no matter what happened in the energy space moving forward, we'll always need to eat and get some food somehow. I've got both of those stocks in my small dividend portfolio and will certainly have them for many years to come. Tesco is the UK's largest retailer by market share, taking on nearly 30% of the spend, which is nearly double the likes of Sainsbury's and Asda, who hold around the 15% mark each respectively. 
It's an extremely competitive space with some very tight margins, but there is plenty of money to be made. At a high level over the past 10 years, the return on your capital has not been the best bet so far, with a loss of around 40%. The glory days might have passed you by, but it does make this up with a healthy dividend of around 3.5%. But bear in mind it's only been paid over the last few years and there was a couple of years gap where it wasn't always paid. The company has a market cap of over £20 billion. It will need to make sure it innovates though to stay at the top and make sure that it can capitalise on that growth it's seen during periods of lockdown. And also it will need to make sure that new players like Amazon don't come in and slowly crush it like the new discount retailers Lidl and Aldi are all trying to do with their aggressive expansion plans. But either way, regardless of what happens in the short term, Tesco will likely be around for a very, very long time to come. It's already survived over 100 years, so here is to the next century to make its mark and deliver back to shareholders. As they say, every little helps. And that concludes my five FTSE 100 stocks to end for life. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember that I'm not a financial advisor and this is just for fun and educational purposes. Please make sure you do all of your own research and make the investment choices that are right for you. If you've enjoyed the video, please drop me a big fat like. Subscribe for many more if you want already so we can hopefully get to 1,000 subscribers before Christmas. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video and as always, happy investing.